Tyrion's like, yeah, she. I've heard she's beautiful, and maybe Joff will find her beautiful as well. Her body, and like Littlefinger's like, yeah, her body is nice. Haha, ha, I'm creepy Baelish. And... Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Brotherhood Without Manners, your favorite full spoiler review podcast of George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series, reading A Clash of Kings. As always, I am your host, Zach, and sitting here next to me, my brother, Nate. That's me. Yeah. What up? What, you, what's what's new? Nothing. I've We're in quarantine. All, I've been with you yeah. all day. I and know so what's there's new. Nothing, there's nothing great. Well, we, we do know that uh, George is working on Winds of Winter a bit more Woo! because of isolation, so expecting good things in the future even though uh worldcon has now gone virtual virtual so he can't actually be held <laughs> have you heard the theory george it's george himself who released you the come up came up with that well, you think that you're so clever that that's just he needed more time and you're you're set on that i'm just saying you okay. know i don't think that's actually now he case. doesn't physically have to go to worldcon if you've been here before Thank you for coming back. If you have not been here, we are full spoiler. We talk about the series as a whole. And so if you don't know that Rob and Catelyn get slaughtered at the Red Wedding at the in the middle of Storm of Swords, you do now. You should have listened to my warning. Uh-oh. Oh, well. We, last chapter, were reading Bran 5. Bran 5. And so Bran is finally starting to realize the truth of the green sight that Jojen's been laying at his feet. Um, even if they don't work, then Roderick has brought the bastard Ramsey Snow to Winterfell without them realizing it's him. Cause it's, he's yeah, like, he's under the guise of Reek right now. Jojen also told Bran that he dreamed of the sea, the sea coming to Winterfell, and we as three readers know that that is foreshadowing for the Greyjoys that are coming. But uh, we also got some mention of the. Stony Shore being harried by reavers and pillagers, and that will that be is next episode. Currently, where Theon is, yeah. Uh, this episode, though, we will be reading Tyrion Eight, going jumping back down to King's Landing. Last we had left Tyrion, Tyrion's been kind of handling shit like a boss. He did his little hat trick with Pycelle, Varys, and Littlefinger, and revealing Pycelle as Pycelle. Cersei's informant. And in doing so, managed to get him thrown into a black, well, threw him in a black cell, had him thrown in a black cell while also shaving his beard and scaring the piss out of him, literally. Yeah, at which point he also took over Lancel as a spy. Yeah. Who was coming, arguing about releasing him. That did not happen. Nah. And instead he turned Lancel. Well, it does uh, happen to him. Well, he does Grant turn him Pysel, over. Yeah. But he's not to be on, he won't be on the council anymore, but Cersei can keep him as a pet if she wants. But yeah, the... The big point of that is that he, yeah, he wins. Lancel now is completely his, and Tyrion's kind of feeling like some hot shit. Yeah. And so we open this one with Varys, and he's giving the small council the news that Renly has been killed. And it's uh, he's reading out loud. He says his throat was opened from ear to ear by a blade that passed through steel and bone as if they were soft cheese. First, I like soft cheese unrelated second that's that's not true no we know that that's not true because we had just read it in catlin's yeah, chapter. His throat wasn't slit it was stabbed and so ugh. and uh yeah it's he he says that uh but even that is a rumor because he his his spies in renley's camp aren't as high placed as they would like so right. that's interesting that varus doesn't have people that high up reporting to him he's got some people in renley's camp but no one who was in the tent Nobody that, that night in the tent. yeah and so cersei wants to know who it was that killed him and he just says you know some people say it was emin coy coy some people say it was lady catlin like it's yeah, rumors they say one say stannis snuck through the middle of the army in the night um, one that it was a maid who Renly spurned, a camp follower brought in to serve his pleasure. Uh, another one even says that it was Catelyn Stark, and Cat like nobody would believe that Catelyn Stark would kill Renly just because of the honor bound Starks and Northern. And so Cersei's pissed. She's yeah. like, "This is fucking stupid. What are we even paying you for? What did I buy you for? D- to make me sad? To bring me rumors?" 
And Varys is like, yeah, well, you pay me well for those rumors, bitch. And she's like, we pay you for the truth. And uh, you might want to start getting me that or this council will grow smaller still. And then Varys and Littlefinger kind of just blatantly go Talking, back and yeah. forth about, like, joking about who's getting kicked yeah, off next. Yeah, because Littlefinger's like, you know, well, the, the realm could probably do with a few they, a few less counselors, you know, so that's not a bad thing, really, is it? And then Varys is like, dude, how are you not so certain it's not going to be you that's next that's put on the hands list to get fucked? He was on that fucking list. Like, they know that because they were both part of the hat trick there. It's so, just it's so, this is such a bizarre chapter thing that's occurring here this moment like they're Littlefinger and Varys are having this crosstalk like there's nowhere else no one else in the room yeah. but both Tyrion and Cersei are sitting here and it's just kind of like the fuck like they're joking about it like oh you're gonna get kicked off no you're gonna get kicked off how do you know you're not is I think off? it's just them showing their confidence with their positions they know that the Cersei and Tyrion both know that these two men are fairly powerful in their own right they need them yeah. and that they can so they can get away with talking like this but Tyrion's heard enough and he says it's a shame Joffrey had saved a special pike for Renly's head but Whoever did it, we must assume that it was Stannis. The gain is his, clearly. And Tyrion doesn't like this news. He'd counted on a bloody battle between the two and the, the forces being drained or diminished well, yeah. slightly. The last time the a Baratheon was doing battle from Storm's End was the siege with Stannis, and it lasted more than a year. And so, yeah, Tyrion and the Lannisters were really hoping that this would be a long, drawn-out battle nah. that's going to take, you know, a lot of their supplies and resources. Not that it didn't happen. No. Nope. Not at all. So he asks about what remains of Renly's host, and Varys says that the greater part of his foot is still at Bitterbridge. Uh, most of the lords at Storm's End have gone over to Stannis, led by the Florence, which is uh, his wife, yeah. Lady Selyse's house. But not all went to Stannis. Not Loras Tyrell, Randall Tarly, Mathis Rowan, and Storm's End itself has not yet yielded. Sir Con Courtney, Cor Penrose. Courtney Penrose holds the castle in Renly's name and will not believe that his liege is dead. He demands to see the remains, but Renly's corpse has unaccountably vanished, carried away most like by some men at arms or another. So Loras took the body. Yeah. We do know that. He we also, yeah, learned armor. that he he killed Emin uh, Coy and Robar Royce, which, if you remember, were the Robar was the badass who went and gave Catelyn and Brienne the time to flee, um, probably trying to hold off Loras right here. He went mad, yeah, and slew three of Renly's guards. And so, yeah, Loras, just in his grief-stricken, seeing his lover dead, yeah, fucking went insane. It. He likely heads for Bitterbridge, where his sister is, the Renly's queen, as well as many soldiers who are suddenly kingless. And Varys, kind of being Varys, is like, I wonder whose side they'll take. Ha ha ha! Well, because then there's going to be a lot of other houses and stuff that are not the major houses that serve those ones. And he Varys points out, you know, a lot of those that did serve Storm's End don't realize that they now serve Stannis again. But not all of them necessarily love Will, Stannis. Right. And uh, Tyrion thinks that they have a an opportunity here to ally with Loras Tyrell, and then through that, Mace Tyrell and his bannermen may join them as well. They clearly have no love for Stannis, and he thinks that they're devoted to Renly, they loved Renly, but Renly is slain, so perhaps we can give them reason to prefer Joffrey over Stannis. Yeah. Which, like, that's the... The only way he could potentially go about it is not make them fucking love Joffrey, but just he's preferable to yeah. the man who killed their king right now. Exactly. And so, God, um, Tyrion's, Tyrion's clever. Well, he's Peter witty. Peter immediately offers and suggests gold. Of course. I just Bribes, feel, titles, castles. Yeah, yeah. That's and that he's playing to his strengths. Littlefinger's pulling teeth here, though. He because he knows it's not that's not all it's going to take, but he's saying. That's how we soften the yeah. the, the grease the, the wheel and get that wheel turning, and then through there you because need a lot little fingers of for little finger says gold and bribes aren't going to be enough to sway Highgarden, and little fingers like absolutely not. You're right, but the lower lords that we need to persuade Loras and his father 
they can be bought with bribes and titles, and, and, and that's and that's castles, significant. And, exactly. Loris is the key. Littlefinger says he has always been Mace's favorite son, though he is the third born, I believe. Second, born. second born, and uh, that's when Tyrion suggests marrying Joffrey to Princess right. Marjorie. Well. Not princess anymore, but yes. Marjorie Tyrell, my girl. Cersei is immediately like, no, no, no. We no, have Sansa. No. <laughs> we have Sansa. And this is where, again, we're going to see a lot of diverging. You know, Cersei thinks she's on this next level, but she, there's no reason to keep Sansa in that position at this point. With this current change in the the battle climate, you know they need to change it their surprises tactics. me how simple of a of a task it is to actually break a marriage contract like it's not that big of a deal like get the high Septon to agree to right. it which he's in their fucking pocket so yeah so i don't see she makes a big deal over it when really well she is i do you not think that Cersei's threatened already I believe she is. Well, absolutely, like, I guess. Doesn't yeah, that want makes sense. Sansa's, a queen. Sansa's a dumb little. Yeah, dope. she knows she can manipulate. She her. can absolutely, you know, force Sansa around. Marjorie Tyrell is clearly a player. Like she knows what she's doing. If she's dicking around with Renly and at the war camps, and now she's at Bitter Bridge, where Loras is suddenly racing quickly to right, whose right. side are they going to? And so she denies because. Uh, she Tyrion's like, yeah, she. I've heard she's beautiful, and maybe Joff will find her beautiful as well. Her body and like Littlefinger's like, yeah, her body is nice. Ha ha, I'm creepy, Baelish. And uh, Tyrion's like, well, maybe that'll attract him. And Cersei's like, no, Joffrey. Even though he's a fourteen year old, he doesn't think he, of he doesn't want sex at all. He doesn't think of females in that way, which is so like. Naive. Re- well, re- na- naive, but revealing about Cersei is she's she pictures Joffrey as this baby Innocent boy, little, yeah, this child still. This when not- Tyrion reminds her that he just had Sansa stripped, basically nude, in front of the entire court, like because she has teats, not because she deserved to be punished. That like he could have done it a million ways. He stripped her because he's aware of those things. Yeah, it's uh. It's and then Tyrion kind of digresses here and thinks about how after all the bullshit with Sansa in the yard that occurred, Tyrion had spoken to Varys with the intent to arrange a trip for Joffrey to Chitaya. Yeah. Yeah. Chitaya, yeah. And get laid. You know, uh, I think in the show it's Bronn who suggests this that he's uh, he's backed up from balls to brain. Like they want to get him laid and, you know, essentially hopefully it'll help relieve some relieve tension. some of the poison, yeah. And they they realize they they have this discussion. It goes through the discussion with Tyrion and Varys. But the tricky part will be the Hound getting him away from the Hound because the Hound never leaves. But Tyrion's like, surely he must at some point. And that's when Varys is like, my lord, you know, a suspicious man might think you mean malicious intent on I'm our the, king yeah. trying to find him alone. And Tyrion kind of giving it right back is like, well, Varys, you wound me like. I only want Joffrey's love. That is all. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's bullshit, but it is uh, an interesting, especially with Tyrion being accused of the king's murder later. Right. How that he... Varys kind of mentions already, like, hey, you're acting like you want to get him alone. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's kind of sketchy. But. But so the war had had other demands, so Joffrey getting laid must wait, and that's when uh, t- bringing it back. Tyrion tells Cersei that a Tyrell match is still ideal, like it's still something they should pursue. And Littlefinger agrees, saying that the Stark girl o- gives only her body. Marjorie Tyrell brings fifty thousand swords and all the strength of Highgarden. Yeah, fucking there you go. There's all your reasons right there. Varys agrees. And Cersei says that Joffrey is too proud to settle for Renly's leavings. He will never consent. No, that's... Again, you're not accounting for the fact that he's a 13-year-old boy 
14, maybe at this 14, point. 14, I think, yeah. And Marjorie is 16, 16 17, and like that. a very attractive woman at this point. Like, And that's not to discredit Sansa for being an attractive girl. Like, But for her, Sansa but is a, a girl. A, a, well, a play thing to Joffrey. Right. It was never viewed as beauty. He never. Or, you know, my queen. Marjorie being presented to him as the king and uh, doing the, you know, the whole, your grace, like the way Marjorie can is. Yeah, it's it's a whole different level level of landscape for it, and yeah, she's she's hot, man. Like that's gonna work for it. But Tyrion shrugs and says, "In three years, when Joffrey comes of age, he can consent or not. But until then, your regent, I'm his hand, and he'll marry whoever the fuck we say." He is a child, Cersei. Yeah, which is what finally gets Cersei to be like, "Yeah, um, right. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got me. Yeah, but." <laughs> May the gods help you all if Joffrey doesn't like this girl. Like, fuck off. Yeah, so Tyrion turns, looking at them all, deciding, now which of us shall we be sending to Bitterbridge to tell Sir Loras that we have a proposal? And so he's immediately like, you should go, sir. Well, first she tries well, to push yeah, Jacelyn yeah. by water. Jacelyn. Um, which, which we know she was trying to get rid of him right. from being uh, captain of the city watch. And he kind of expected that and points out, no, it needs to be somebody from the council who can speak on behalf of the king. And Well, who else can speak better on behalf of the king than the hand himself? You wield words as skillfully as Jamie wields a sword. And Tyrion notes that the candlelight gleamed green as wildfire in her eyes as she's saying this. And I just, I love that fucking quote. Yeah. But uh, he immediately turns it back, or thinks to himself, are you that eager to get me out of the city, Cersei? And he's like, nah, bitch, like, I'm not going. Like, uh, there would be, I'd be mocked. Like, it would be seen as an the, insult. The king's mother, though. Yeah. And technically, he also has, they, I mean, they both have points for sending each other. But they're interrupted by Peter Baelish saying, no, 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 I volunteered as tribute. I'll go. And Tyrion's like, fuck, what's he oh, what's no. he doing? Yeah, what's, what's he doing? What's he up to? But Littlefinger breaks it down. He's on the council, but not of the king's blood. He knows Loris and has given him no cause to dislike him. Mace carries no enmity for him that he knows, and he is quite skilled at negotiation, which are all true things, supposedly. Now, I think that the real reason he wants is when he makes some demands towards the end here. But he first, you know, because Tyrion's like, fuck, I've got no reason to, to deny him. I can't tell him no, because there's no reason he shouldn't be the one. Do you think Catelyn being there has anything to do with it? Um, may- Maybe, probably, because he's, you know, Creeper Baelish and obsessed. But I mean, yeah, he hasn't seen her since Ned died, so, I think like, it's, shoot that shot, yeah, brah. I think it's more to do with... The he's sliding into the DMs. The, the, yeah, the, the end there where he says that he wants a letter stating that he has permission to bargain and write up declarations on behalf of the king. Yep. And put them how he decides, so it gives him full authority to write in whatever the fuck he wants, and so he can slip in all these little, you know. Oh, but the rights go to Heron Hall, who I also happen to be the master. Well, of. yeah, and Tyrion's even aware of that he's doing that. Like he's asking for the king's seal on a blank check, essentially. And Tyrion's like, "Fuck," but okay, because Tyrion notes that it, it, there's no other choice. It's either Littlefinger or Tyrion who has to go. And if Tyrion left King's Landing, everything he's done would be undone. Yeah. And so they actually Tyrion and Littlefinger barter on an escort. Fucking yeah! And like how many they're gonna send with him? But then he, even there, he realizes, yeah, he does have to have enough of a group to look like he should be taken seriously. So they end up settling on three hundred knights with forty extra, twenty knights, twenty squires. And Littlefinger says that he'll also take Horror and Slobber, the Red Wine twins, with him. Yes, and send so... them on to their father. They have need of Paxter Redwine, as he is Mace's oldest friend. Now. That right there is evidence that he has Jane Poole because it's never actually said. We don't know that there were Sansa only ever and... three people who called him horror and slobber. That was Sansa and Jane Poole when they came up with the nickname Arya, who they who heard about it and fucking Littlefinger, who was told by Sansa. And who was Jane there Poole. having tea parties with them. And so is he getting information from Jane Poole currently? And that's how he knew. 
because I don't see Sansa having told him at this point. They, mm-hmm. And so I think that he knows that because nobody else in the kingdom, like that's the nicknames that Jane and Sansa came up with. Yeah. And I don't think that, at least not in any Sansa chapters, has he had that told by her. And so it, it has to have been Jane Poole that told him from, you know, being with her. Obviously, I don't recall where Jane Poole is at this point. So with well, with him. Well, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, learning like the location as far as yeah, like, one of the brothels as yeah. far as where as a reread or no. But uh, Cersei disagrees. She says that they don't want his love, Paxton Redwine's love. They want his swords and sails. Like, yeah, well, yeah, because Cersei's like, well, he's a traitor. He doesn't deserve yeah, shit. No. We don't need to give them Fuck back. And they're like, no, like. We still need everything that he has to offer. All their galleys, they have all the boats, you know, to to take uh, Stannis on a bit more. So Don't Tyrion's want that. Bump. like, all right, let's split the diff. We'll send Sir Hobber back, keep Sir Horace here, and Paxter should be clever enough to understand the meaning of that. Meaning, we still hold a hostage, but here's your son, one of your sons back. We will faith. give the other one too. And then this is they where... agree to all. They all agree to that without protest. Like everyone's like, yeah, cool. perfect, all that right. works. And this is when uh, Littlefinger demands fast horses, more gold, and the letter with the king's seal, stating yeah. he has permission to do shit. And Tyrion grants him that, and then Littlefinger says that he will leave before the dawn breaks, and he adds. That on his return, he trusts he'll be rewarded for his efforts, of course. And Cersei straight up is like, well, what do you want, Peter? And he's like, hmm. And he glances at Tyrion with a sly smile. I'll give it some consideration. No doubt I'll think of something. And he takes, like, fuck you. You fucking cry. Like, everyone knows you got a million things on your list. But, yeah, he makes a show of it. And Tyrion glances outside to see a bunch of fog obscuring his view, and he notes that it's a foul day for travel. And this is where they do this little doodly 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 doodly. I thought the uh, the fog obscuring his vision was an interesting thing. Like I think that that's a. I think it's just showing the future. Like it's kind of this. He's it's uncertain right now where things are going to happen. Tyrion is kind of blindly walking into a a cloud of fog. Yeah, just the whole future because of whatever happened around Renly's death. It's just throwing a wrench into his plans because he was expecting this siege eventually with the where his chain is going to hold up and Blackwater is going to go his way, and now things are a little stranger. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they do, as you said, a little montage here where he decides they better get started on the letters and that Joffrey needs to be woken. And it was still dark and gray when the meeting finished and Varys slips off uh, heading out. And Cersei asks Tyrion how his chain, 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 chain is coming. And Tyrion's... Uh, It's good. Getting longer every day. Yeah. uh, We ought to thank Sir Penrose, who is holding Storm's End currently, Stannis will never march north with Storm's End untaken, and that buys us more time for the chain to grow longer. And Cersei says... That... What the fuck is, like, what I'm saying to what Cersei says? Yeah. Because what the fuck? She says maybe she was wrong about Tyrion. He's not so much a fool as she thought. He has been a great help since he's come to the city, and he must forgive her for speaking harshly to him in the past. What does she know? Like, I forget, as a rereader, there's something. I think she, uh, does she have Chitayaya or Eliaya at this point? Oh, is that it? I she... think she has Eliaya or one of them, um, or, I don't know, I, my also, my thinking was that she was, uh, aware of the, uh, fuck, I just lost my train of thought oh, entirely. Well, that's good. I'm glad you did that, because that wasn't a waste of time for the last 30 seconds. You suck. Um, no, I have no idea either, so I just have to yell at you like you had something planned. Yeah, but she does have something up her sleeve, because that's Cersei. She doesn't actually give a flying fuck about Tyrion, and this is a show, and he's aware of it. He's like, um... Okay, because she comes up and kisses him on the head. Yes, yeah, she does. And Because he's like, no, you don't need to apologize, we're... We're all good. Yeah, and they both giggle about it. And yeah, she kisses his brow. And Tyrion's just like, the fuck? She leaves. And he says as much to Bronn. He's like, what the fuck? And Bronn asks him, was it so sweet? And Tyrion says, it was unexpected. 
He, she hasn't kissed me since I was a kid. Like, yeah, as a dare from Jamie. Yeah, like she had be- been behaving oddly of late, and Tyrion found it quite unsettling. And so Bronn says that the woman's finally taken note of your charms. And Tyrion says, ah, hardly. No, no, the woman is hatching something. Best find out what, Bronn. You know I hate surprises. And that's where we end Tyrion 8 in A Clash of Kings. It is pretty fantastic of a chapter. A lot of just political, straightforward talking, the reaction to Renly's death. Yeah, yeah. And the what what King's Landing in the Lannisters plan on doing next. Uh, I really... So is he sicking Bronn on Cersei now? No, I, I don't think he's sicking Bronn on her. I think, well, now he's having her uh, trailed, but I don't know if that means specifically just Bronn or Bronn and like put out he's the putting word, the city yeah. guard, the watch, to be. <coughs> yeah, so I don't think that he's specifically going to be trailing her or anything, but close enough. You got an inductee? Um, yeah, I was going to give mine to uh, Jane Poole, because I think that she's the one that gave that information to Littlefinger and this was a subtle little nod that she's still around and doing things and so uh, little Jane Poole for you know the bleak future she's got to look forward to I haven't forgotten she was a bitch so oh dang yeah oh well well she can come hang out on this sure Uh, my inductee I've given this actually zero thought for this chapter so you're going to sit there and shit on my inductee. You don't even come up with yours. <laughs> no, um, I guess I'll give it to Loris for the tales of his, you know, his anguish. He went mad and stole the king's body. Like, at least he, he, he in the stories, he's coming off like a badass, slew three men in his rage. Like, get it, Loris, because you, you've got some rough times coming ahead, too, actually. So induct him while you can, folks, yeah. before they start dropping. Uh, those were our inductees. We did get an inductee from our favorite French fry, Julian. Yeah, so Julian wrote in. He said, uh, may the intrigues continue. We won't go into details about the straightforward stuff, which is, you know, what we covered anyway, so no worries there. Can't wait to hear the second level messages he might have missed in there. Just one thing. He absolutely loved the conversation between Tyrion and Cersei. Sense a strange affection, but as our favorite imp pointed out, there might be a trick behind it all. As for his inductee, it's going to be the Knight of Flowers, who got himself a pretty impressive reputation for his age. Told that already, but he can't wait to discover his book self. Hey. And so he says, Valor Flower Harris. <laughs> and we love that you wrote in. Thank yeah, you thanks, as always, Julian. Julian. We will be reading. I closed my notebook already. So next is going to be Theon 3. So if you have inductees for Theon, send those on in after Theon is Aria 8. Yeah, we uh, expected this to be a shorter episode, so we did do a small council. So if you want to write in to us, as Julian did, you can reach us many ways, many different socials. He uh, writes in through the email, which is withoutmannersbrotherhood at gmail.com. We are both on Twitter. I'm on Twitter at carstark92. Nate is on Twitter at mannerswithout, which is also the Instagram. Yep, we have a Facebook, facebook.com slash brotherhoodpodcast. There's also a private Facebook group that you can get access to by becoming a patron. Our Patreon, patreon.com slash withoutmanners. You can also get bonus episodes, Winds of Winter sample chapters. Um, currently, there's a a thing on Podchaser where if you leave a review, Podchaser is donating 25 cents to help with like the COVID-19 relief. Hey. So go leave us a review on Podchaser. Don't worry about all the other places. Just Podchaser because they're donating money. For and it's a, yeah, it's a good cause. So do that. Um, and otherwise... send us an inductees for Tyrion, uh, Tyrion, Theon 3, which we're reading next. And then yeah. after that is Arya 8. And so get us inductees for those. Write us in. Rate us. Review us. Like, subscribe, and send us messages wherever. We do engage wherever we can find it. Um, We did not forget to mention, because I'm saying it right now, uh, Stephanie and Amelia have been keeping up with us on the episodes over on YouTube. We appreciate your comments. I try to see them as often as I can and get to you guys with those. So thank you for writing to us there. You can also get us there if you're not one of those two. And I stay think, safe, yeah. stay isolated, wash and your wash your hands, and we'll catch you on the next one. Valor de Harris. Peace.